online service for this week. Or wherever you are joining us from and whatever time, you are most welcome. It is so good that we can gather together and we can worship God wherever we may be. This week we are thinking about freedom and what it means to be free. We begin our service by singing one of Wesley's hymn, Jesus the Name High Over All. together. We thank you that by your Holy Spirit we are joined together no matter where we may be. Lord, you are beyond a space and time. You are not limited to buildings, but you come to us and, and we thank you and we praise you. Lord Jesus, we do recognise that you are the name high over all. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In you uh, there is freedom and there is relief. In you uh, there is hope. There is hope both now and there is hope of eternal life with you. 
Lord God, we rejoice in that hope and we rejoice in the promise of your freedom. Loving God, as we meet together, may we hear your word to us. May our hearts be set free, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord Jesus, come by your Holy Spirit, your spirit that helps us, that comforts us, that equips us, that enables us, that challenges us and convicts us. Come, that as we worship you, we may know your love, your peace, your presence, your freedom this day and always, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are here uh, to uh, worship God, to pour out our hearts, to rely on God and to trust in his love and his mercy. So we sing, here I am, once again.
As Paul and Silas were going to a place of prayer, they were met by a slave girl who had an evil spirit by which she was able to predict the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and Silas shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many, many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the evil spirit left the girl. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of money making was gone, they captured Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They told the officials, These men are Jews and they are throwing our city into an uproar by teaching customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the officials ordered them to be beaten and thrown into jail. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains were broken. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and he set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Paul and Silas were released from prison and left in peace. Have you ever felt trapped? Maybe you have locked a door and found it very difficult to unlock him um, again. You have felt trapped and that you just don't know what to do. Or maybe the lift has stopped suddenly and you wonder um, if the doors are going to open again. Maybe uh, during the past 18 months you have felt trapped, that your freedom has been taken away. Maybe you have felt trapped by a relationship, by tradition, by views, by responsibilities or expectations that are placed upon you. Our reading this week gives the account of Paul and Silas in prison, as recorded in Acts by Luke. The miracle and wonder of chains being broken and prisoners being set free but others were also being set free. Not from physical chains made out of metal or iron, but from invisible metaphorical chains. And by being set free, they enter a new life through Jesus Christ. So let us look at our story. Paul and Silas have reached Philippi in Greece. They have reached Europe. They stay in Philippi for a couple of weeks and as they are going from place to place they see a woman, a slave girl who could tell the future and who has made lots of money for her owner. The woman would cry out to Paul and Silas that they were servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Culturally, this was not a problem, as salvation was a popular subject for conversation. But this occurred a number of times, and gradually, Paul became troubled. Was he troubled or annoyed because he did not think that she was helping the spread of the gospel message? 
Was he troubled or annoyed because he could see that this woman was caught, trapped, being used and exploited for her skills? Was he troubled or annoyed because he knew that the source of the woman's ability was evil and not good? We do not know why Paul was troubled or annoyed. It could have been one or a combination of these reasons or for a different reason entirely. But what we do know is that Paul's distress made him turn around and put a stop to it. He commanded the spirit to come out of the woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Paul saw that the evil spirit had power over the woman. He saw that the owner was holding the girl captive and he set her free. The slave girl's owners, however, did not appreciate the transformation and brought Paul and Silas before the magistrate, which led to them being flogged and ended up with them being put in prison. And so in prison, Paul and Silas are put in the innermost cell, in pain from the flogging, with aching limbs and lacerated backs. Somehow at midnight they burst into prayer and song, praising God rather than moaning and grumbling. Suddenly there is an earthquake. The whole jail shakes and shudders and prison doors burst open. The jailer fears the worst when he wakes up. He is personally responsible for the prisoners and if they have all escaped his life is not worth living. Failure would be paid for by his life. In desperation, he was going to commit suicide. But then Paul shouts out, Don't harm yourself, we are all alive. The jailer cannot believe the situation and falls down before Paul and Silas, asking what he must do to be saved. Paul and Silas reply, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. The jailer recognised that something was missing in his life. He saw Paul and Silas and in them was something different. There was joy, deep joy and a sense of hope, unshakable hope. The jailer takes Paul and Silas and nurses their wounds. Then the jailer and his whole family are baptised as a response. They have truly experienced that life begins with Christ. Our passage from Acts reminds us of the transforming power of God which brings new life. The slave girl is set free from the evil that is dominating her life. The jailer becomes the one who needs to be freed, who needs to be re released. And the lives of his whole family are transformed. In this world today, there are people in physical chains, imprisoned because of their faith. There are people caught in slavery who long to be free. There are people even in British society who do not feel free to be the people who they feel God calls them to be. Maybe even you don't feel free. God offers to us all new life in Christ. We have in our reading the reminder of the transforming power of God to free us from the chains that bind us. The slave girl is set free. The jailer is set free. And we can be free too. I wonder what chains are binding you and me. We may not be in physical chains. But what part of our lives are preventing us from being fully the people that God calls us to be? From fully experiencing the love and grace that God offers to us all? From living life to the full and experiencing new life in Christ? Anything that restricts, inhabits or binds us can be like a chain. Chains that bind us can be the wrongs that we have done, the things that we have said, thought or done, which hurt us, other people, 
and affect our relationship with God, that we haven't surrendered to God, that we haven't said sorry for. Chains that bind us can be guilt or hurt from the past, the prejudice of false stereotypes that we may face, which can make us feel unlovable and unworthy, preventing us from experiencing the fullness of God's love through the people around us. Chains that bind us can be addiction, selfishness and pride. Chains that bind us can be failing to respond to God and following the way that he calls. Chains that bind us can be all consuming responsibilities. Clinging to the past, holding on to tradition because this is the way that we have always done it. Chains that bind us can be unrealistic expectations. Jesus died for us all so that the chains that bind us can be broken, can be destroyed. The cross defeated death, defeated sin. And equipped and enabled by God's Holy Spirit, we can be transformed and we can experience a new life in Christ. We can be set free. Jesus offers to all a new beginning to start afresh, claiming the promises of God and recognising that the chains that bind us and that bind our world can be broken in Jesus' name. Who or what may you need to release? Who or what may you need to be released from? That we may all be the people that God calls us to be. We come to pray. We come to say that we are sorry. Let us pray. God of compassion and mercy, we lay at your feet the times when we have been imprisoned by words of anger and hatred rather than liberated by words of gentleness and peace. We lay at your feet the times when we have been imprisoned by thought of jealousy and bitterness, rather than liberated by thought of understanding and acceptance. We lay at your feet the times when we have been imprisoned by actions of selfishness and thoughtlessness, rather than liberated by actions of friendship and love. Grant us your forgiveness, O God, and change our hearts so that we might dare to be more like you. In Christ we are set free. Through Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. We sing of the amazing God who has broken our chains and has set this captive free. I give you all the honour. I give.
So let us pray. Sovereign God, we pray for all who are denied freedom. Freedom to worship, to express their opinions, to vote, to determine their own affairs. Lord, we pray for those whose freedom has been taken away those who have knowingly broken the law, those who have caused injury and hurt to others, those who are a danger to themselves and society. Those who are victims of injustice and oppression. Lord, we pray for those who feel that they are not in control of their lives. Those who are struggling to come to terms with difficult news. Loving God, we pray for the lonely, for the hurting, for the bereaved. For the dying. For the hungry. For the oppressed. Sovereign God, Break through everything which denies your love and frustrates your will. Reach out to your world in which so many are held hostage to their circumstances. And by the power of your spirit, 
Grant release from all that imprisons us. Lord God, continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon your church, that we may be bold in proclaiming your message of love and acceptance and freedom. For we offer all our prayers in the name of Jesus, through whom we are truly set free. And as people who are set free, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We conclude our service by singing that great Wesley hymn, My chain fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee, and can it be that I should gain?
May the God who created us set us free. May the Son who cut the chains set us free. May the Spirit who longs to fill our lives set us free. And the blessing of God, Creator, Son and Spirit, free us and fill us now and always, that we may live as children of God. Amen. Please keep safe, take care and God bless. Thank you.